Good happy Sunday morning everyone. I'm Riley King and welcome to this Sunday morning edition of Politics with Riley King. Let's begin. We have a lot of political news to get to for all of you, so let's get started. First up, on Friday, as you all know probably by now, Governor Chris Sununu announced stay-at-home order extended to June 15th. Also, he also announced reopening guidance given for houses of worship and day camps. Hotels can start booking guests immediately for stays beginning June 5th, and also drivers and classes can start again. Let's take a look at that video from WMUR News 9. Hampshire's stay-at-home order is now extended until June 15th. More sectors are allowed to reopen, including houses of worship. More people are attending online worship than normally attended in person. Uh, that there are, are, are deep spiritual needs being felt during this time. Effective immediately, services can resume with 40% occupancy and social distancing in place. The Diocese of Manchester says its masses will continue next weekend as is the case with other churches now needing time to safely welcome parishioners back. Just because this uh, permission has been granted legally uh, in, in the state, um, many churches find themselves in a place that is not yet the right time. Hotels and rentals can reopen June 5th to New Hampshire guests and out-of-staters who have quarantined at home for two weeks. Businesses with 20 or more rooms can only have 50% capacity. We'll watch the data over the next few weeks and hopefully be able to make another step forward if, if the, the data looks good. Day camps will welcome kids back starting June 22nd, and overnight camps can tentatively reopen June 28th, but the state is still working out guidance. The benefit of day camps is that the vast majority of kids are from those communities. State leaders continue to be encouraged by the overall data showing a decline in the spread of the virus. We'll continue to, to flex things open over the next couple of weeks and then hopefully transition out of the stay-at-home order uh, on June 15th. Driver's Ed classes and testing can also resume immediately, and you can find all of the state's new guidance documents on nh.gov. Reporting live in Manchester, Mike Cronin, WMUR News Now. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. State Senator Martha Fuller Clark to retire after more than 25 years as a New Hampshire lawmaker. Portsmouth Democrat says it's time for a new generation of political leaders. After seven terms in the state Senate and six terms in the House, Senator Martha Fuller Clark announced Thursday she is retiring from elective office, saying it is time for a new generation of political leaders to fill her seat. Fuller Clerk is 78, was elected to the Senate to represent District 24 in 2004 and served through 2010 when she lost in a Republican wave. She quickly regained a Senate seat in 2012, this time representing the newly redrawn District 21 towns of Durham, Lee, Madbury, Newfields, Newington, Newmarket, and the city of Portsmouth. Fuller Clark was re-elected in 2014, 2016, and 2018. 
She said Thursday she will not seek re-election this year and is retiring, but not resigning. Speculation swirls in Democratic circles over who'll run to secede Fuller Clerk. Longtime Seco State Senator retiring at the end of current term. In the two short days since State Senator Martha Fuller Clerk announced that she will retire from the Senate after the end of her current term, Speculation has swirled in Democrat circles about who might fill for and file for her seat. The state filing period begins Wednesday, June 3rd and ends Friday, June 12th, so there isn't much time for decision to be made. At the top of the speculation list is Stephen Shaheen, a former city council in Portsmouth who currently serves as a Portsmouth police commissioner. She could not be reached for comment, but is well known among Democrats that she and has she has family and business obligations in addition to her civic service in her home city. And she's Shaheen, a daughter of U.S. Senator Jean Shaheen. House Republicans ask Democrat Speaker to keep business tax cuts in place aimed pandemic. With no change to law, low business profits tax, business enterprise tax revenue will likely trigger tax hikes at the end of June. New Hampshire House Minority Republicans are asking Democrat Speaker Steve Shitloff to allow the House to consider legislation that would keep business tax cuts intact even if, as expected, revenue from those taxes fall below estimates. NHGOP raises residency question about young state law maker voting activity. Dartmouth graduate rep Garrett says he remains a Hanover resident. After the state Republican Party Reside a question this week about the resident of 22 year old state rep Garrett, the Democrat college graduate, said he remains a resident of Hanover. Every town joins Brady. Brady packed gun control groups is backing Pappet. Every town for gun safety action fund names New Hampshire Democrat among 58 endorsed candidates. Several hours after New Hampshire primary source reported earlier Thursday that the gun violence prevention groups Brady and Brady Pack have endorsed U.S. Rep. Chris Pappas for re-election, a third major group focused on the issue backed the first term Democrat. Gardner praises end of eight year ordeal over New Hampshire voting requirements. After Supreme Court opinion end to lawsuit, Secretary of State hopes for a halt to accusation New Hampshire is voters suspension state. New Hampshire Supreme Court weighed in last Wednesday with an opinion on questions sent by a federal judge who 
had been hearing a challenge to the New Hampshire voting residency law known as House Bill 1264. The court said that in its opinion, even before House Bill 1264 was passed in 2018, there was no distinction between domicile and residence. An earlier Supreme Court ruling issued in 2015 struck down a law that required residency in order to vote. Since that ruling, New Hampshire has been the only state in the nation that did not require one to be a resident to vote, only that one be dismal in the state. Residency and dismal were two different things. Advantage Biden with risk. Trump disapproval grows pull. Biden holds the lead over Trump among registered voters. Joe Biden holds a 10-point lead over President Donald Trump among registered voters in the latest ABC News slash Washington Post poll, but that's sliced in half among those certain to vote, reflecting challenges for Biden in terms of voter commitment and enthusiasm alike. Trump has his own risk, including sharply negative views of the economy and greater criticism of his handling of the coronavirus pandemic. His overall job approval rating is back under water. 45 to 53% among all Americans, with 7 point rise in disapproval since late March. Take a look at this graph here Trump job approval. You'll see on this graph in the blue approval and disapproval in the purple. And that does it for this Sunday edition of Politics with Riley King. Thank you for joining us for this Sunday edition of Politics with Riley King. Have a great rest of your Sunday, everyone. I'll see you back here next Sunday for another edition of Politics with Riley King. And have a great week ahead of you, everyone. Goodbye.